I buy all my toys, figures, and collectibles at Big Bad Toy Store, and you can too. They ship worldwide, and you don't pay for it until it arrives in their store. Hey, what's up? Siri Emerald here. So, with Hot Toys continually wanting to reissue the material that they made earlier, and I'm not talking about just reissuing it in regards to making a change, as in a new Mark III, or reissuing it in regards to a repaint, as in uh, the several modes of the Mark VII's, but they are actually reissuing what they sold earlier in its exact same incarnation. For instance, you can buy a Mark 43 with the exact same MMS number to what the original Mark 43 was with no difference whatsoever. And now they've done the same thing with the Hall of Armor. Now I don't necessarily say this is a bad or even a good thing. It is a sought after piece. It is an unbelievable addition to a collection it does kind of get under my skin that they are reissuing the exact same product, which kind of lowers the collectability of it in that regards. But it does allow those that are new into the hobby to be able to have the, such a beautiful piece in their own collection. Now, they release this as three versions, just like they did before. You have the single pack item, the four pack item, and the seven pack item. The seven pack item obviously is to represent Iron Man 3 Hall of Armor in his garage. The four pack is to represent the Iron Man 2 configuration in his garage. And the single pack, you can look at that in one of two ways. It is set up to be for someone who only wants a single one, or you can look at it as the armor that was in Marvel's Avengers on the helicarrier. Having said that, the other thing in regards to this reissue which kind of uh, gets under my skin as well, is that they made no changes to it. Now, some of you may wonder, well, what possible changes could they have made? Why would you want them to change it in the first place? Well, my biggest complaint on this is the Hall of Armor, when assembled in the 4-pack or the 7-pack, you can plug one AC adapter into it, and it will power the LED light above the figure. It will power the LED light below the figure on the actual stand, and it will power the LED light in the holographic emitting section of the stand. It does not power the lights in the walls that separate each of the armor cases. Those, if you wish to utilize the light on them, still require batteries to be plugged into them. There are several buttons on the front of the cases to turn on or off the various lights. And all of those regular lights, like I said, the top light, the bottom light, and the front light are all powered by the AC power or batteries. It doesn't come with the AC adapter. It, it doesn't come with batteries either. If you want to power it, you can either power it with batteries or you can get the AC adapter. And the AC adapter, like I said, will power all those, but it doesn't power the front. Why they didn't set that up, I have no idea. But I'm telling you right now, unless they make a change to this, this is the exact same mold and release and creation of it as the original, which means that's a fault. If they're going to reissue it, fix that. The next problem that I have with it is the holographic panels in front of it. They're not wide enough. They should be wider. There's about a quarter of an inch on each side that you can't cover the entire piece up with. You slide it into the holographic slot and then you lean it forward until it lies up against the LED light at the top to protect your figure per se. But it's not totally sealed in there. You can still get dust or whatever else inside this. And the whole purpose of putting it into a display case with a cover on the front of it is to keep it from getting dusty. If you were going to give me a, something that looks like it could possibly be used as a dust shield, by golly, make it a dust shield. Set it so I can actually not have to worry about dust getting in there through the sides. Why don't you fix that? One main problem, and this isn't anything that they could fix, is the size of this. Collectors, you probably understand how large this is, but let me tell you, if you haven't seen one of these, it is immense. They are 15.25 inches tall, and when assembled in all seven pieces, it is five feet long and steps out almost three feet deep from front to back uh, because of the curve that you assemble them in. They look beautiful. If you have the case, I can't imagine a Iron Man collector not wanting this in their display, or at least the four pack, or at least the single pack. And you could put in there every figure except for Igor. He doesn't fit in it. Mark 38 doesn't fit. The Mark 35 and 36 barely 
fit in there, but they do. You'll have to open up the stance on the legs a little wide so he can go in there, which kind of shortens his height, but he's right in there. And so you can use these for the rest of the, what we called back then the Iron Legion in Iron Man 3, when we seen the rest of the armors that were underneath the wine cellar there. It was a different hall of armor, but you can use this one just fine. If you want to buy several rows of these and stack them several feet high to in order to display them, you're totally capable of doing that. And it looks amazing when displayed in this manner. And now this gives you an opportunity to be able to do that had you not had the opportunity to do it before. Because the people who had these kind of held on to them. Nonetheless, if you bought all the armors and then one day you decided you wanted to start getting rid of some of the duplicates or whatever that you had or just wanted to knock them down, I have a feeling a lot of collectors, this is going to be one of the last things that they get rid of in regards to narrowing down their collection. So, which would make it a little more difficult for a new collector to get a hold of these because they haven't made them since 2012. So it's been six years since these were announced. These don't come out until between July and September. So you've got a little bit of a wait. Like I said, the seven piece is $765 and the four piece is $450. And if you wanted to get the single item, it's $125. And again, if you're buying these through Big Bad Toy Store, you don't pay for them until they arrive in the store. Now, you may have to give a deposit on the seven piece, maybe even the four piece, but I don't believe they're taking a deposit on the single piece to give you an opportunity to set money aside for the next seven months until they get here. And if you had to order one at a time to keep from having to pay the deposit, but you did want to have the $700 to be able to get it later, it's going to cost you a little bit more because seven times 125 turns to $875 to 765 for a seven piece or if a four piece it would come to $500 compared to $450 so there is a price savings in getting the multiple pack there's no difference in them there's no difference whatsoever in the single pack and the multi pack except for in the single pack you get all seven of the armors in the holographic display that you can put onto the front of them. So if you are displaying the Mark VI like they did in Marvel's Avengers, you can put the Mark VI on there. If you if your favorite suit happens to be the Mark VII, you can put the Mark VII holographic on there because they give you one copy of all seven of them. In the four pack, they give you two copies of all seven of them. And in the seven pack, they give you three copies of all seven of them. That's another thing that kind of gets under my skin. They have these holographic images for the others. Now, granted, in the depiction of the wine cellar, we don't see holographic images on the front of them. The cabinets that they are stored in appear to be open in the front with no casing whatsoever. They might just not have been turned on. I'm sure he would have still had the holographic images depicted in front of him in the first place, even down there, because he would have had to go down there to get them or brought them up or something. I don't know. I've seen different uh, pictures where they've shown all types of concept art in regards to how he would deal with the Iron Legion underneath. So why not give us the other holographic images? You've got 50 plus suits, especially if you start taking into consideration the War Machine suits. Why can't you just provide those? Especially for you collectors that want to make the stack higher and higher and higher with this, or lower and lower and lower, depending on which way you're building it. Why not be able to put your Mark 17 holographic image on the front of this? I think it would look great. I love having my little holographic image in there. Now, I must admit that whenever you have the cover in front of your armor, there is a little bit of reflectivity, which kind of keeps you from being able to enjoy the figure completely. Anytime there's anything in front of it, there's going to be some reflectivity. So, you know, that's the toss up. You don't have to put the holographic images on there. It's a vinyl sticker that you apply to the plastic piece that they give you. And if you want to just display the plastic piece without the holographic, you are totally capable of doing that as well. It's a great set. I have mixed feelings in regards to this coming out. Let me tell you what the official release said. Beautifully designed to combine functionality and modern engineering, the Hall of Armor from Tony Stark's Malibu Mansion displays the evolution of Iron Man armor and has left an unforgettable impression on fans. Located in the basement workshop, it was created to house the futuristic arsenal of armored suits with perfect protection. Hot Toys is excited to reissue the stylish six-scale Hall of Armor collectible from the Diorama series, inspired by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. 
Complementing the contemporary architecture of his enormous mansion, the movie Accurate Collectible features more than 20 different LED light-up areas, remarkable metallic painting, stickers that show a holographic-like effect of Mark 1 through 7, and most importantly, it is compatible with displaying almost any Hot Toys 6-scale Iron Man collectible figurine. Recreate Tony Stark's lab with the Hall of Armor to give your collection a polished exterior while keeping them safe and secure. Now the product size that they show it as 14.96 inches high. I can tell you right now, they are 15.25 inches. Now, I don't want to sound nitpicky, but that might be important to you, depending on where you're displaying it. If you're counting on it being less than 15 inches, and it says it's 14.96 inches, you might have a little bit of a problem. So I'm giving you a heads up, it is 15.25 inches, no matter what they say that the dimensional height is of it on the re official release. Unless they have made them a little bit smaller, which I can't imagine why because at 15.25 inches, like I said, you barely get the Mark 35 and the Mark 36 in there. And if they decided they're going to cut it off by quarter of an inch, you're not getting those figures in there. That is how much clearance that you have there. You don't even have a quarter of an inch. You have to make them, scrunch them down in order to be able to get them in there. So that's important to know. Another thing on the seven piece that I bought, if you have them separated into seven individual cabinets, which you're completely capable of doing. You have to assemble it into the seven pack. Like I said, there's no difference in what they send you in regards to each piece to the other one. You get an extra wall with the seven piece. I don't even know where I even put that extra wall, but I know I was given one now that I think about it because I was given seven boxes of the single packs in a big box. Like I said, estimated arrival on this is between July 2019 and September 2019. They could sell for $125 for the single armor, $450 for the four pack, or $765 for the seven pack. What do you think? Have you been wanting to add this to your collection, just haven't been able to find it? They did release the styrofoam cased case of the, well, like again, like we called them the Iron Legion back then. And there were collectors that passed on it, like myself, because of the construction on it. I wish that they had made that out of the same plastic that these are made out of. But for whatever reason, they decided to make them out of styrofoam. And that's kind of why I passed on them. Because I couldn't see spending, gosh, I think it was also $110 or $120 bucks for those a piece for styrofoam. The, at that time, the die-cast figures were coming encased in styrofoam and i'm thinking so what you give us for free you're not going to charge us 120 dollars for so i didn't get it but they there is a different configuration of the design of the case for the rest of the suits from eight on up maybe when they decide they want to re-release the set they might release those in something other than styrofoam and they may actually release them into the plastic just like these are god that'd be great then I would buy the additional 34 to set it up in regards to doing that. I don't know where I would have the room. I would have to probably buy a big, huge house just to be able to display them all as it is. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, click the thumbs up button if you like this video. That tells me that you like what I'm doing. Share this video with your friends. Let them know where they can go to find 1-6 scale news and reviews. If you're a subscriber of mine, hey, welcome back. I hope you're tuning in on Saturday mornings when I do my live videos. You direct that show. You're the one that determines what it is that I do in regards to opening up packages, displaying figures, discussing what's upcoming in trends of hot toys, or whatever. If you want to see a room tour, you guys direct the show. It is your show. I appreciate the time I get to spend with you guys, so I look forward to seeing you on Saturday mornings. If you haven't subscribed yet, hey, take this opportunity now to do so. Click the link, follow it to the section where you would subscribe, and then just click the little bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new video. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can also see some of my collection on Pinterest. And if you feel so inclined, subscribe to me on Patreon. Hey, I'm not promising anything, but every little bit helps. And to see more videos that are made, you'll find the post over here on the right. Hey, thanks again for watching, everyone. See you in the next video. Happy collecting.